<laughs> Congratulations on the film. I have to say, I really enjoyed it. It had such, such an energy about it and such a, a vitality about it, even though the subject matter is actually quite serious and quite heavy at times. Sure. Uh, well, well, thank you. Uh, I'm glad you liked it. Um, yeah, that was that was my intention. Was I thought that the subject matter is very dark, uh, and 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 I, I you know there's a lot of kind of um, morality going through the movie, and I, but I wanted to make it as as fun and kind of cinematic as possible with, with the music and the visuals. So it kind of allowed you to offset the kind of dark themes, and so it didn't become sort of. Uh, it didn't get the it didn't get saturated with that. So you had a choice to kind of engage in, in really examining what they're going through, or just watch it as as, as more of a kind of a as, as a movie without kind of really worrying too much about it. And you based it on Rob Doyle's novel. I wondered what it was about the book that made you think that it would actually translate into something cinematic. So, I mean, honestly, I I think that Rob's writing is brilliant. Um, I, I think that when I read his book, I thought I had, it, you know, I, I heard music from reading the book. Um, well, so when I, when I read books, I like to listen to certain music, you know, a lot of the time. And when I read Rob's book, it just, it just had a certain kind of rock and roll, pulpy style to it. Um, and, and I'm not going to lie, it, it, wasn't, it, wasn't the most, um, it wasn't the most sort of linear book, but just the characters that Rob created, I just thought were fascinating. And I thought the dynamics between them were fascinating. And I thought... The, the kind of immorality that he actually got into with these characters who were still quite innocent and, and at the same time figuring stuff out, but are also doing, doing kind of terrible crass things and also reacting to certain environmental things, I just thought was fascinating. And it made me want to explore it. So I just thought he created this, these characters that felt very real and very representative of a time of life in Ireland. And how involved did he get in the making of the film or was he quite happy to sort of hand it over to you? He was no Robert. Robert was pretty good. He was pretty good at kind of with kind of handing it over to me. But I think I, I'd writ, I've written a couple of books, and myself and Rob met at, at, at an awards thing, a literary awards ceremony. We had a good chat about the idea of writing. And Rob's a very trusting individual, and he trusted my ideas with it, which was which was great because you know I I I did create a very singular vision on it. But at the same time, I was very much I was very careful about about kind of um, about. Being being as as careful as possible with Rob's world and with with the characters he created, and then I just put my own touch from a cinematic point of view, and you know went a bit wild with it. And it's set in Dublin, which is where you come from yourself. I wondered yeah. how much um, that was actually part of the appeal, and whether the story resonated with your own memories of growing up in the city. Uh, well, it did, and I actually the school that 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 they, the boys go to is actually my original uh, secondary school. So we went back and we shot there. Um, the beach that that we shot in is actually close to where is a beach I grew up on. Uh, a lot of the streets were, were the same. So I, I did. That was part of what it was. Was I actually wanted to make something that that was a little bit representative to an extent of when I was a, when I was a teenager, and and of of these stories and anecdotes that I remembered and knew about. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring through with, with, with it. So how did it feel going back to your old haunts? I mean, particularly your old school. Uh, it was great because we got to go into the old school and then like, <laughs> and I was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> I was like, you know. <laughs> well, it, it was, well, actually, so the character, there's certain things which in the film, the film aren't in the book and there's certain things in the book aren't in the film. Like it, 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 is, it is an adaptation, but at the same time, I was a little bit, you know, loose, like the character, Mr. Um, I kind of sort of changed one of the characters to sort of fit a character that I knew from school and uh, had been in one of my books. So I tried to sort of bring my own my own um, uh, experiences and, and, and kind of uh, my own thoughts into, into Rob's books. It became a little bit of an amalgamation of that, you know. Now you're an actor as, as well as being a writer and a director and probably doing all sorts of other things as well. Um, what made you expand into those areas? Because you've not given up acting. Sorry, I've not been. A... You've not given up on acting. You're still doing that. Oh, no, well. I, I'm acting on a TV show right now in Australia. <laughs> we we'll start next week. Oh, um, yeah. So no, I, I honestly, I um, for me, I, I, I learned. I, I started acting when I was in college, but I'd always been writing my whole life, and I wanted to. I wanted to write books, and I wanted to write. And then when I learned how to act. Uh, I started making films with with a couple of like indie films with a couple of friends in college, 
And then I just, for me, it, it was a natural way that I could learn about acting was to also make films and I just wanted to make stories. So I just learned about cinematography. I learned how to edit. Um, I got some great sort of mentors at the time, like the, uh, my f the very first film we made for, for like, you know, Fiverr. Uh, the guy who shot it, he, he won an Oscar for this short film called Curfew a couple of years ago. And he's shot like seven Sundance films since. But we grew up together making films. So we just learned how to make things. And I just, um, you know, learned how to make indie films, making mistakes. That was my film school for five or six years, just making really low budget movies that people might never see. I'd spend, I'd spend hundreds and thousands of hours working on editing, doing the score. And, and then now I understand a bit better how to make a bigger movie because I've made smaller things and had fun doing it. So how much does being an actor help you when you're working with your cast on a film? I mean, particularly on this one, does, does it mean that you're, you're quite hands off with them and sort of leave them to follow their own instincts and get on with it? Uh, yes and no. I, 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 th I think that there's, I mean, I, I, I'm, you, I think the, ma the main thing you do is, is I think you, you, and it's what I like as an actor as well, is that people, people bring you on board of projects, they want to trust you to do your thing. And so I did the same thing. You want to trust people to create the characters and go, this, this is your world now. And then I think that my job, and I think that that's what the actors have worked with, I guess, trust me in that is, I just try and just, just shift them in certain directions and just try and just kind of like, you know, you just try and subtly just push the performances or you decide in what way you want the pacing of the scene to go. But in general, you go, this is your character now and, and you give it to them. And like, if, I mean, if you give characters to people like Dean and Finn and Anya and Travis, you let them create those worlds and then you just sort of dictate maybe the pace and some of the beats of the scene and just kind of guide it. But you kind of just, you know, you, you want to be complimentary to what they're doing as opposed to, you know, this is, they're, they're, they're brilliant to what they do. So, you know. They are, they are. And, and the interesting thing I thought about this was that we're, we're used to seeing their faces already and they're actually a very young group of actors and they're also incredibly talented. But when you think that, Dean Charles Chapman was in 1917, Anya Taylor-Joy was in Emma. You couldn't get further away from the setting of your film. Now, I wondered why you actually chose the four of them. Were they, were they in your mind when you were writing the scripts? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I'd met Dean. I mean, it, the, the movie obviously took a couple of years to make, like every movie does. And I, I met Dean when he was younger. And once I met Dean, I knew that Dean had to be this person. And then once I met Finn, I knew that Finn had to be that person. And I sort of, and then like when I met Ferdy, I knew that Ferdy had to be that person. So I kind of built, I wanted to build a dynamic. Collected them as you went on. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Because, you know, I was like, okay, this person's going to fit in with this group. And, like, and Anya is going to fit in with this group. And Anya and Dean also knew each other. And I was like, they're going to work really well together. So you want to kind of get a group of people that fit. There's no point just, just getting actors arbitrarily. You want to get the right dynamic. Because every, every film sort of, you know, it, it grows, it works based off the, you know, the dynamic between your, between your cast. And so I wanted to get that dynamic right. So that was the most important thing about casting. It wasn't just about finding someone who was like brilliant at playing a character. It's like, how are these four going to fit? And that, that was the kind of idea behind it. And that's, that's so important. I mean, how did you get them to actually build that, I was going to say relationship, but there are so many overlaying relationships and intersecting relationships. How did they go about that? Did they have much rehearsal time together or? No, we, we only had about a week of prep beforehand because it was, a, it was a, this is a small little movie. We didn't have a huge amount of time um, and we had a very small window with all these actors because, you know, once the movie finished, uh, Anya, Dean, Finn, everyone was going off to different projects and we had to make it at the time we did because ideally we would have had it more, longer to prep. It was like, if we don't make this now, we won't have everyone like this. This is a once off to get everyone at this time. So we had a short prep rehearsal time, but, you know, we all had dinner and hung out and they're all very clever. And, and they kind of understood and, and they already knew what they were doing by the time they arrived, you know? So we, when you hire really talented people, you just kind of, you just let them, let them be. Just sit back and let them, let them go yeah. as it were. Of course. So now of course you've directed yourself in some of your previous films, but you're not in this one, unless you put in a sneaky cameo and I didn't notice it. Uh, why, uh, did you, <laughs> why did you decide to stay behind the camera for this particular film? Yeah. Uh, well, there wasn't really any parts for me in this film, so that was the main thing. Uh, and and the, the only part that, that I could have played would have been the homeless guy, Andy. But to be honest with you, I think Emmett Scanlon is, is a superb actor, so I wanted Emmett to play it. And it also, for me, it's not about the ego of playing a part. I was like, I think I thought he was a much better 
uh, actor to do that part than I was. So it was purely about who was best for the part, and that's what made sense. That's very modest of you. <laughs> well, it's it's true. It's it's you know that's 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 got to be the way when you're making a film. It's like who's who's going to work for this, and who who makes sense, you know. If if it had been if it had been, I, I did a movie in L.A. recently. I directed a movie called Grey Elephant, and um, I acted in that. And that was because, you know, uh, the part made sense for me to do that. I was like, well, this makes sense, you know. So I, I only if it makes sense, you know. There were times in the film, I have to say, where I really started thinking of train spotting. One one or two scenes in in particular. I wondered if that was ever in the back of your mind when you were writing the script or making the film. Yeah, I, I think I think that whenever you make a film, because I love train spotting, and, and I think whenever you make a film, there's about kind of you know a coming of age or teenagers at that time period, and, and they're doing they're doing drugs and alcohol, that sort of, and you, you're trying to put together that type of soundtrack. And I did, but I did, yes, I did want to keep that energy, especially in the opening. So the opening of Train Spotting does have you and McGregor being chased and running and all that type of stuff, and, and I and I love that. So there was a little bit of an element of that when they're being chased by, by, the, by the thing. I did want to bring in certain elements. That I did the same with some of Spring Breakers. There's some, there's some elements of Le N in there, which I loved, and, um, and some Gaspar Noe stuff, and, and then there's some Bronson things and Romper Stomper. So I kind of wanted to, there's certain, you know, films that I was inspired by that I did sort of try and pull, pull elements from. So Train Spotting was one of them in terms of the, the sheer energy that they bring through it, you know? So you're back to acting now, you're about to start a TV series, you say? That is correct, yes. Anything yes. you can tell me about that? Uh, it's a show called La Brea for, for NBC, and we're shooting in Australia. Uh, so, yeah. So the weather's probably <laughs> better there than it is here at the moment. Well, I just did, well, I just did two weeks of quarantine in a hotel, and let me tell you that it got tough after 10 days. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But, you must be did, yeah. glad to be out. Well, I did get to go outside. Yes, Australia is, seems a lot more chill, which is um, I'm excited about. Yeah. <laughs> Wish you lots of luck for that. Thank you very much for your time, Owen. It's been lovely to have a chat with you. And thank you very much indeed for the film as well.